magical. Yeah, that's what the slaves said too. The what? Slaves. Really? This place like this was built on slave labor. Oh. No, you don't. You did it before without any a low center of gravity and a very open and airy canopy that allows them to absorb wind load. More important than the canopy is actually the root system of these trees. The root system of these trees 
50% bigger in diameter than the canopy. So if you can imagine the roots underneath this road tangled together, it gives the trees a lot of structural integrity, but also allows them to absorb a lot of fresh water from the topsoil. And the trees require a lot of, a lot of water. The beautiful gray Spanish moss is not from Spain and it's not a moss. Um, that's a name given to a species of phalangia. It's an air-dwelling plant that's more closely related to pineapples than it is to moss. It needs the altitude of the tree to collect its nutrients and its moisture out of the air. It drips excess moisture around the drip line of the tree, benefiting the earth. There's also a heavy fern covering on all these branches. It's all brown right now. It's called resurrection fern. Resurrection fern, after five days of no rain, pulls its own chlorophyll out of its leaves. And, and that way it goes dormant and protects itself. After a solid 30 minutes of rain, it pumps that chlorophyll back out. And all of a sudden, on all these branches, it'll have a beautiful bird of green fern growing. That fern collects up excess marine water more than it needs. And that rain ends up in the vascular system of the trees because of the roots of the fern. So they're both beneficial. They're beneficial to each other. Symbiotic relationship is my uh, corporate manager used to call it. Symbiotic. It's not uncommon when these trees reach maturity for the canopies to reach touch the ground. You can see a good example of that on our right hand side right now. As the canopies touch the ground, if they've been in contact with the earth and undisturbed for three years, they'll start to grow a root system and they'll grow back up. That's what you see right there. The gravesite here is for Thomas Boone and his wife Mary. They were the two Boones that were buried on the avenue by a later generation. Hello ponies out in the field there in the horse pasture. On our left are the last nine historic slave dwellings. They were built here between 1790 and 1810 out of secondary brick that could not go to the Charleston market. They were not built for the benefit of the enslaved people. They were built to make the property owner look more opulent to visiting guests. They were terrible places to live. After Reconstruction, until the 1940s, sharecropping families still lived in these. The farm owners would have paid the sharecroppers in a written form of script, not in coin or in currency. So the sharecropping families couldn't take that monetary re re uh, that monetary value that they got and take it to Charleston to spend it. They would only, they could only spend that written script in one place. This white building behind us on the right hand side is, is the company store. It mimicked that closed loop economic system of slavery until the 1940s. It's the only building on the property with iron bars on the windows. Now our hospitality suite. Behind the hospitality suite, the stables, we've got a very historic border horse. What do you call that one? Sleep, sleep what? Sleep cabin. Sleep cabin. A slave quarters. Oh, it's against the light. Let me see. I'll move over there.
touched the ground and then they sprouted. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the one that the guy is telling us. Yeah. That's nice. Interesting. I mean, yeah, most of the trees can grow right. through branch. 